So in today's video, we are going to go over how to transform the position versus time graph to the velocity versus time graph and then to the acceleration versus time graph. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Once again, when I look at my analytics on YouTube, I see that a very large percentage, more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe, support my channel, click on the notifications bell, uh, give me a thumbs up, leave me a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. And also, I've made a bunch of other teaching and learning material that you can find my Teachers Pay Teachers website, whether you're looking for online activities, notes, practice problems, examples with the solutions, you can find all of that at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And of course, I've made other videos for this topic, which you can find in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But let's get started. This is position versus time graphs. So then we're going to go through velocity and the acceleration, how to convert one to the other. I just want to go over some background information that you should remember. I always tell my students to don't forget these things for the position versus time graph. This is for the position versus time graph. On the position versus time graph, the slope of the line on the position versus time graph is always equal to the velocity. Okay, we're going to use the symbol m for the slope, like y equals mx plus b. So the m is for the symbol for the slope. And the slope of the line or the curve on the position versus time graph is equal to the velocity. And the sign of the velocity is equal to the direction of the motion. What I mean by that is whether that slope is positive or negative, or the sign of velocity plus or minus, positive or negative, that tells you the direction because, for example, if one object has a velocity of 5 meters per second or plus 5 meters per second and the other one has a velocity of minus 5 meters per second, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean this one is speeding up and this one is slowing down. That's a common mistake, especially with negative people. That, oh, that means it must be slowing down. No, that means it's going in the negative direction. This one's going in the positive direction. These two objects have the same speed, 5 meters per second. You include the direction, and then you get the velocity, because we often say velocity is speed with the direction. So this one is going in the positive direction, and this one is going in the minus. And generally, minus and positive are just in opposite directions. If positive is to the left, let's say if positive is to the right, like on a, on a coordinate system, then negative is to the left. If positive is up, then negative is down. One is right, one is left, one is up, one is down. North, south, east, west, that kind of thing. They're going in opposite directions. Okay, so the slope is the velocity and the sign is the direction of motion. Now, on the position versus time graph, I always tell my students, you'll always see two different kinds of lines, so to speak. One is the straight line, and one is the curved line. And when you see a straight line, you should think of certain things. And when you see a curved line, you should think of certain things. So you don't get that all confused. Straight lines have a constant slope. And the slope is the velocity. So if the slope is constant, then the velocity is also constant, and there's no acceleration. Okay? And it doesn't matter whether it's straight horizontal or straight with a positive slope or straight with a negative slope. All that applies, straight line, constant slope, constant velocity, no acceleration. Okay, a curved line doesn't have a constant slope. A curved line has a slope that's always changing. The slope along that curve is always changing based on the line that's tangent to that curve, which we'll talk about in a moment. And that means if the slope is changing and the slope is equal to the velocity, then the velocity is changing and that means it's accelerating. So I try to impress upon my students, when they see a straight line, think of those things and think primarily of constant velocity. When you see a curved line, think of those characteristics and think of acceleration like that. Okay? Don't forget those things, position versus time graph. Then for the velocity versus time graph, I think in general when you're in high school or you're in early university, the line on the velocity versus time graph will always be straight. Okay? It might not always be horizontal or probably won't always be horizontal because of a positive slope or a negative slope but it will always be a straight line, not a curved line, and the slope of the line on the velocity versus time graph is equal to the acceleration. All right, and therefore we have a straight line. If we always have a straight line, then we're always going to have a constant slope, and then we're always going to have a constant acceleration because the slope is equal to the acceleration. Okay, so that's kind of the background information that you should know about position versus time graphs, and velocity versus time graph. Now we can go on and go through converting position to velocity to acceleration. There are seven different graphs that you should be aware of. 
Okay, so we're going to start, I think, at the beginning. That's a good place to start. And with the kind of the simplest graph, and then we'll get a little more complicated as we go along. So here we have position, velocity, acceleration. Please remember that the slope of the position versus time graph is equal to the velocity, and the slope of the acceleration of the velocity versus time graph is equal to the acceleration. Okay, now you have to analyze each of these graphs individually and try not to think about what you think they should be doing or what it should be. Try to go with what is the slope. The slope is the answer. Okay, so for example, this is the very first one, and this line is a straight line, and as we said, it has a constant slope, and therefore it has a constant velocity. Now the slope of that line is equal to zero. Okay, that line has a, that's a horizontal line. It does have a slope, so to speak. It's not sloping up or down. It has a horizontal line, so we say the slope is zero. And that means that the velocity is zero meters per second. And if you think of that, look, here's the position, and here's time. It starts at this position, and it ends at the same position. It's not moving. Okay, we often say that this one is at rest. Now, we have a line that's at rest. We know the slope of this line is equal to the velocity. Well, the slope is zero. That velocity is zero. So we would show that where would we draw that? Where would we draw it? We would draw that right there because that's the velocity equals zero like that. Okay, now we know the slope of that graph is the acceleration. Well, that graph also has no slope. That's a horizontal line. It doesn't have a slope or the slope is zero. Okay, because its velocity is zero meters per second, and therefore the slope of that line is equal to the acceleration, and therefore the acceleration is zero meters per second, and we would draw that one just like that right along the x-axis also. Now, I just want to point out that this line could be drawn anywhere on here. It doesn't matter whether it's shifted down here or shifted up here or right along here. It would be the same result for the velocity and the acceleration graph like that. Generally, I draw it, or we draw it like some distance above on the positive, but it could also be down here on the negative position. It would be the same thing. It would just be in staying the same negative place. All right. Okay. Now we'll try and speed up a little bit since we've done the first one like that. Now the next one is drawn generally like that. Now that line also has a constant slope and therefore it also has a constant velocity, but it does have a slope. It's not, the slope is not zero. That line has a positive slope. Now, in this video, we're not going to calculate the slope. We're just doing this, uh, you know, kind of qual qualitatively. But this line has a positive slope. So it could be drawn with any positive slope. And it could also be drawn down here also, as long as it was parallel or it has a positive slope. And the slope of that line is positive, And therefore, it has a constant velocity. And the sign is the direction, so it has a constant velocity, and it's moving in the positive direction. So how would we show that over here? Now, here's the positive velocities, and here's the negative velocities. This is zero velocity right here, obviously. Okay, so how are we going to draw that so it has constant velocity and positive? Constant velocity and moving in the positive direction, then that would have to be drawn like that. Now, this could be drawn anywhere up here. It couldn't be drawn down here, because that's negative velocity, and that would be going in the negative direction. So we could draw that anywhere up here. And now for the acceleration graph, that line also has a slope of zero, okay? And the slope is the acceleration, and that means the acceleration is zero, so we draw it right along the x-axis that shows zero acceleration, okay? Constant slope, constant velocity, slope is positive. That means it's moving in the positive direction. Now you'll see maybe with the next one, that we have a line that has a negative slope, but it is still a straight line, so it still has a constant velocity, but this one has a negative slope. It's sloping down. Sloping up is positive. Sloping down is negative. So this one has a constant velocity, but this one's moving in the negative direction. Now, these are the net positive velocities, which all everything up here is positive direction, but down here is a negative velocity. The sign is the direction, so we're going to draw this one down here like that. But that line still has no slope or has a slope of zero, so the acceleration is zero, and right like that. Now, that, those three should make sense because this is a straight line, constant velocity. If you're moving constant velocity, you're not changing your speed, you're not changing your velocity, so your acceleration is always going to be zero like that. Okay, so those are the first three. Once again, this line could be drawn anywhere along here, and we would get the same result for the velocity and for the acceleration. Okay, now we're going to do the accelerating graphs.
Okay, so for the accelerating graph, there's four. We're going to have speeding up, slowing down in the positive and negative direction. And the first one we're going to draw looks just like that. Now, that's a curved line. has a changing slope, and therefore, it's accelerating. All right, so we know that it's accelerating. Now, we've got to figure out two things. Is it speeding up or slowing down? And what is the direction? Is it positive or negative? So the way we do that is like this. You can look at this curve. I like to just tell my students, look at this curve. And I think if I was standing right here or you were standing right here at the bottom and you were walking up here, is this getting steeper or less steep? Well, if it's getting steeper like this one, okay, it's, the slope is increasing. And the slope of that curve is the velocity. So if the slope is increasing, then the velocity must be increasing. So I would say that is speeding up. All right, now the question about the direction works like this. You have to draw a line that is tangent to that curve. A tangent line only touches the curve in one place. It does not cross the curve in two places. So the way you do that is you draw a tangent line, and you would draw that tangent line just like that. That's the tangent line. It touches that curve in one place. You can't draw it kind of inside because then it would touch in two places. You draw it right along there. That's the tangent line. And that line, is the slope of that line positive or negative? Well, the slope of that line is sloping up, so the slope of that line is positive. And that means that this thing is speeding up in the positive direction. Okay, if you were to draw the tangent line down here, it would be like this. If you were to draw a tangent line like this, it would be up here. And the slope of that tangent line would be increasing. But all you need is one. You can see this is getting steeper. That's the speeding up part. This tangent line has a positive slope. It's sloping up. And therefore, it's moving in the positive direction. Now you've got to get that on here. Now you've got to show speeding up in the positive direction. Well, here is zero velocity. We want to have an increasing velocity over time, so it's going to go up like this. This would be positive. If you drew it down here, that would be speeding up in the negative direction because here's the negative velocity. You want to draw it like this, speeding up in the positive direction. I often tell my students, think of the, be the beginning of the line and the end. Here it's zero, and here it's at some higher velocity, some higher speed, and it's positive, so that means it's going in the positive direction. Now that line has a positive slope. Okay, and that means the acceleration is positive, so you simply draw a straight line like that. Now, this has a constant slope, okay? All the lines on the acceleration graph will always be horizontal, and that's positive. The slope is positive, so the acceleration is positive like that. Okay, and you can kind of see this is another way I like to talk about sometimes. You have positive velocity, positive acceleration, speeding up, because those two have the same sign. Okay, the next one looks like this. Now, once again, if I was to stand here and go down like this and walk down this curve, I would say that that curve is getting less steep. It's kind of flattening out there like that. So this is accelerating because it is a curve, and the slope is decreasing, and that means the velocity is decreasing. That means it's slowing down. And then if I draw the tangent line, it looks like that. That line has a negative slope, and that means it's slowing down in a negative direction. So now i got to go from some high slope, some high velocity, to zero. Okay, because it's going to slow down and come out here at zero, and therefore I would draw the velocity graph like that. That's negative velocity, because it's negative direction, and it's slowing down. It has some high velocity and goes to zero, just like that. Now this line is constant, but it does have a slope, and it does have a positive slope. All right, now the velocities are negative, but the slope is positive, and the slope is the acceleration. So therefore, it's a positive acceleration. All right, now you might say, how could one be positive, one be negative, and one this be, well, the slope is, is positive, then it has to be positive. And if you have a negative velocity and a positive acceleration, those things are opposite signs, that means it's slowing down. That's what this one's doing. Okay, I think we have two more to go through here. This one looks like that. And that curve, if you were walking like on the outside of this curve right here, and you see it's really steep here, and it's getting less steep, that is accelerating, and the slope is decreasing. And that means it's slowing down. Well, in which direction? Well, that's the tangent line, and that tangent line has a positive slope, so that means it's going in the positive direction. So this one is slowing down in the positive direction. And you would go from some high velocity, some high speed, back down to zero, and you draw that like that. 
okay, slowing down has some velocity here at the beginning and slows down here. This is zero velocity. And this one has a constant slope. That has a negative slope, and that means it has a negative acceleration. And therefore, you draw that down here because these are the negative accelerations. And once again, you can see the velocities are positive. The acceleration is negative. Those are opposite signs, and that means it's slowing down. Okay, I think we got one more to go through. And let's see, this one looks like that. Now, if you were walking again here and you've got, you're going to slide right down here, be increasing. So this is accelerating. The slope is increasing, and that means it's speeding up. And in which direction we draw the tangent line? What kind of slope does that have, positive or negative? Sloping down. So that's negative slope. And therefore, you can see that's going in the negative direction. Now, this one is speeding up in the negative direction. So we've got to draw a negative direction. Down here, we know it's going to be down here. This is all negative velocities. These are all positive velocities. And therefore, you can see that it's speeding up like that. It has some zero velocity, has some higher velocity. It has zero and it has some higher velocity in the negative direction. And has a minus slope, a negative slope, and that means the acceleration is negative like that. And you can see you have negative velocities and a negative acceleration. And that means it's speeding up because those have the same sign. Okay, there you go. I think that's a really good thing to do because it's not just plugging the values into the equation and getting the answer. You have to kind of think about what's going on, the relationship between the position graph, the velocity graph, and the acceleration gap. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and found it helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click the notifications bell. Leave me a thumbs up. No, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.